What's up guys and gals, Brian Tong here and this is a video that I'm really super excited to bring to you because you know I talk about all the time Dolby Atmos sound and why I love it. I try and kind of bring that excitement to you but what are we here to talk about? Well we're talking about Dolby Atmos home theater systems with sound bars and we know that in the past home theater has been really tricky and just like there's a lot of things to get like a receiver, there's cables all over the place, there's speakers all over the place but sound bars is kind of, are kind of now taking that space that they're really becoming popular because they're making this easier for people to use. It's a cleaner setup. It can handle all of that. And when you talk about Dolby Atmos sound, this is, you know, audio from the theaters that you're used to bring it at home. It comes from the front, from the back over the top and really just envelopes you. So that's what we're here to do to find out what is the best Dolby Atmos soundbar home theater system. We see all the specs, but really the proof is in the pudding. So we're going to have people like you tell us what sounds the best. Now, I just want to hit you up with a couple quick basics for those of you that are getting into this for the first time. We're going to call it like our home theater crash course. We're going to throw numbers around at you to describe a sound system like 9.2.4 or 5.1.4. Well, sound systems have become more advanced over time because it used to be just be two numbers, but now it's three when you're talking about Dolby Atmos sound. Now that series of three numbers is used to describe the number of speakers and the type of speaker in any sound system. So first up, this first number represents the number of speakers at or near your ear level. The second number represents a speaker dedicated to low bass reproduction. That speaker is typically called the subwoofer that produces those deep booming sounds. And the third number is the number of overhead speakers or speakers that fire at the ceiling and bounce back down to produce those overhead sounds. They are key to any Dolby Atmos system. Now you've heard me talk about Dolby Atmos sound. That's really what we're focusing on here and kind of give you a breakdown of that. It, it comes down to a several elements to make this all happen. So the first thing you have to do is actually have a movie or a video with the Dolby Atmos track on that. Not every movie does. That's one piece of the, this puzzle. Then you have to have a receiver that can interpret and play back Dolby Atmos. So that's the second part of it. And then the third is obviously a home theater system with speakers to translate all that and then bring that to your ears. Dolby Atmos was really popularized in movie theaters. That's where you saw it. And now you can see content on Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime and iTunes. That's really how it's become visible to the mainstream consumer, but people really don't know what it is. But Dolby Atmos sound is really able to specifically place a sound, whether it's next to you, above you, uh, moving over you. Think of like a helicopter flying over or a, a car crash in the corner. It has this really organic specific feel to it. Now, you know, I had to do my research and I really did all the hunting I could to find four of the best Dolby Atmos soundbars for you. So look, here are the contenders coming up. This is our fatal four way of Dolby Atmos soundbars. First up is the Vizio SB46 514 F6. Can you tell these things have easy names? It's a 5.1.4 sound system that supports Dolby Atmos, but no DTSX. It says a virtual DTSX instead. It has a total of eight speakers in the soundbar. One of them is a 10 inch subwoofer and there's 4K HDR and Dolby Vision pass through with a built in Google Assistant. This system retails for $9.99. Next up, the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2.4 SSE soundbar. It's a 9.24 home theater sound system and it supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It has a total of eight speakers in the soundbar. Two of them are 10 inch wireless subwoofers and 4K HDR and Dolby Vision pass through as well. Now there's no audio system, but this package retails for $12.99. Our third combatant, the Sony HTST 5000. Now this is a 7.1.2 system with support for Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It has a total of nine speaker drivers in the soundbar with an eight inch subwoofer, 4K HDR pass through and the Google Assistant. This one retails for $14.99. And last but not least, a new contender to the party, the Samsung Q90R. This is a 7.1.4 system with support for both Dolby Atmos and DTSX. It has a total of eight speaker drivers, an eight inch subwoofer, 4K HDR pass through, and comes with Amazon's Alexa built in. This package retails for $16.99. Now I partnered up with Nakamichi to host this special event here. Really think about it as, um, you know, fans that love tech doing Instead of just Coke versus Pepsi, this is all about soundbars. And honestly, I got to give Nakamichi all the props because I was only going to do this if this was a fair and square kind of comparison. And they felt so confident in their product that they're like, hey, we're going to stack this up against three other soundbars. One of them just came out. We haven't even heard what it sounds like and really be confident in their product and allow us to have people 
just really hear this for themselves and decide which one is the best soundbar system. All right, to be fully transparent, this is the conditions of the test that we're putting out there. We're having all these soundbars in the same exact room. The loudness level, we're going up to 85 decibels. This is really the standard for audio mixing, so that has been calibrated on all the soundbars. All soundbars are also using their latest firmware versions, and they're using the same HDMI 2.0 cables. We're also using the LG UBK90 4K Blu-ray player for three of the sound bars. Now the Vizio is getting the Sony X800M2 4K Blu-ray player because its ARC pass-through can be a little finicky. All right, the content that we're gonna use here for our Dolby Atmos soundbar comparison is the official Dolby Atmos disc. It's a demo that has a variety of different samples. So we're gonna start off with Amaze. This is more of an environmental demo that you can check out. The second one will be Mad Max Fury Road. We know how all this action happens around you and in it. And then the third one is gonna be Unbroken. This really brings dialogue to the forefront while having action in the background. So you, you kind of get a good balance of the mix of those two. And the fourth piece of content here, we're gonna do video games. Not everything is encoded in Dolby Atmos. So 5.1 surround sound is more common than anything. We're gonna throw at you Battlefield 4. This game is really known for its sound design. So we brought a whole bunch of people out to this demo room to really experience those four pieces of content and let us know what they thought about the soundbars. Now, just for our tests, the soundbars were completely covered in a black cloth, so they didn't see what they looked like. They're labeled soundbar A, B, C, and D, and we asked them to give them a score, three for the best, zero for the lowest, and we put all that together and really wanted to find out what they thought. The Kamichi one, yeah. So that was like one of the uh, best sounding um, we went through multiple different variations of it and uh, we, I figured out that, that it's, it's a, the sound felt very surround. So for D, like at the beginning I had like a second place for the first test, but then afterwards like just the voices were so crisp and like they weren't um, overwhelmed by the background noise. Like you could still hear the voices, but you still had a really deep and like spacious background sound of everything. Kind of the same thing and then I knew I was sitting next to a speaker and then during the Mad Max clip I could hear the cars like come up behind me and it felt like I was standing on that hill. Personally it was B, uh, I believe that was the Samsung soundbar and I felt like really immersed whenever I like listened to anything it played. Uh, the bass was great, the um, like the overall, the overall loudness of it was good, the clarity was good. I guess mine's is like tied between like the uh, Samsung and the N Nakamichi. Nakamichi. I think D was a little bit overpowering for me. Um, that um, bass and everything was very impressive, but I think it kind of got mingled with other stuff. I think I ranked A highest because I'm probably familiar with that type of sound. It turned out to be the uh, Nakamichi. I like the uh, clarity of the uh, the dialogue, and plus I could, you could hear some a little bit more detail in the surround sound effects. I like the the best uh, Nakamichi, Nakamichi, Nakamichi. Yes, like I said, the clarity of the uh, uh, speech and uh, the surround is good. D, I didn't know the brand name. I hadn't even heard of it before, so it's really surprising to me. Like they produce better than Sony and Vizio because. I have a Sony system at home, Fire 2, but I really enjoy that. Uh, it was the Nakamichi for mine. The same for me, Nakamichi. The, the D speaker is really awesome. They have two woofers, and then when they see the unbroken, the bomb is hitting, and also they fill the room. We can see those, you know, the ammo shooting on side and then flapping the, the airplane wings. I really like that sound. So here's the final scoring from our Dolby Atmos soundbar test. Coming in at fourth place, the Sony HTST 5000 with an average score of 1.21. Then we have in third place, the Vizio SB46514 F6. That came in with an average score of 1.46. Coming in at second, the Samsung Q90R with a 1.58 average score. And then number one, numero uno, by a large margin, the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2.4 SSE soundbar with an average score of 2.49. The thing that really stands out the most to me about this and is really interesting is that companies can throw all these tech specs at us, but at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding and we had people of all walks of life, some were audiophiles, some were people that have never done anything like this. And what the averages and what the scoring showed is that the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2 was clearly above everyone else. 
And for me, you know, someone who's here, Nakamichi put this event, I know I'm out here, but without a doubt, it had the crispest, highest detail, but also the biggest booming bass. We're talking about two tenant subwoofers that really made the sound complete. It was my pick for this, but I also caught some other cool observations from this. Look, they went on a limb and they said, hey, Samsung, you have a new Dolby Atmos soundbar. They didn't even listen to it. They brought it to this because they were so confident and the Samsung actually sounded really good, except for its subwoofer is what really let you down. If they can work on that, it elevates that. We had the Sony soundbar where it didn't have any rear speakers, so it wasn't able to really give us that full surround sound feel. And then Vizio, I was really surprised. At 999, you're getting actually a pretty good sound. People liked it, but again, Nakamichi was a step ahead everyone else significantly. Not by like this much, but by this much. So there you have it. The people have spoken. The best Dolby Atmos soundbar in the world is the Nakamichi Shockwave Ultra 9.2. And look, we got all these people together. I think you should believe us. Or not. Yeah, you should believe us. What did you think of the experience? Uh, it was not bad, pretty good. Not bad? I ran, I ran the thing. Dude, it, was, it was amazing. Damn. It was the best day of my life. That's the correct answer, Grace. <laughs>